Hey everyone, it's Shot back with another video, and today I wanted to go over the May 11th patch notes. It just dropped a few hours ago, and we have a new battle pass, new character. We're going to dive into it and talk about the new character and go over all of her skills. Let's jump into it. So first thing I really quickly want to mention, the new battle pass, which starts in, uh, as you can see right behind me, it's going to start in about five days. Uh, it's going to be Methasia. So this is a huge, huge uh, battle pass here, uh, not only for the people who already have Methasia, uh, but for the people who do not have Methasia, it's massive. Um, I guess I should have said that backwards, not only for the people who don't have Methasia, but for the people who do have Methasia, her trait is excellent. Um, her extra first ascension plus 15% max HP is very, very good. Both are worth getting. Uh, her she has one of the best traits in the game, in my opinion. 20 10% max HP eight, uh, recovery on a positive effect when you use an ability is huge. Definitely when you compare it with Hakron. So just keep that in mind. And for those of you that don't have a good healer, uh, for those of you that are saying, okay, I can't run the tank comp, I don't have a good healer. Well, guess what? All of you who are at least light spenders can go ahead and buy the battle pass and the tank comp is immediately significantly more viable than it was before. So very, very good news in that front. Second thing is there's a new character, Tashir. She's a water legendary in the free cities. She is right here. We have a 300% up for her, and she looks awesome. Uh, very, very cool looking character here. Reminds me of Virgil and uh, reminds me of Leona. <laughs> so Cassid and Leona combination here um, for those of you that play at League of Legends. But we're going to go over her stats, uh, her abilities, and just overall her as a character. Sort of start off with the base stats here. I went over this on stream, but... Um, realistically, we have a B base attack here, solid, um, one for someone who's going to be a tankier type character. So just kind of whatever, doesn't really matter. S H P really, really solid base HP here. Uh, very, very good base HP and defense as a tankier type character. Really would like to see that when you're talking about a tankier character, we have a hundred base speed. If you don't have the ascensions, which you will not most likely. So very, very solid base speed, uh, kind of average, uh, to, you know, solid as a uh, tankier type character. But we're going to go and dive into the abilities here, and this is where she really starts to shine. We're going to go over the trait first. This trait is insane for PvP. Um, I think overall she's just going to be a PvP character. She's going to be a monster for RTA when that does come out. Plus 10 speed to all team members per positive effect an enemy obtained. So you're talking about, like, let's just say Brand or Windstrex. Let's say you have a Windstrex going, um, which is, I think that's why they made the max stacks 8. When Strix goes, she applies two buffs, 50 speed, 30% attack. Guess what? This character, 80 speed for your whole squad. She outspeeds Windstrex, and your whole squad outspeeds Windstrex if this character is on defense. It does not matter if she gets stunned, because this will just apply to your squad. So this is the instant counter to any Windstrex comp. This is something that's really good on offense. Against Brands, it's good too, because 40 speed right off the bat. So there's a lot of bonuses to this, um, this trait here. Very, very good trait. Again, if you want to run this on offense, you don't have to run your win strikes anymore. You can just run this character and boom, you have more speed than the enemies. So you don't even have to worry about your DPS getting outsped by their DPS because you have 30 extra speed there. Now, if you have the Ascension, she literally just becomes a better win uh against win because she gives them all attack up to your team members as well. Now, this isn't just good against the win comps. Remember, if you're fighting against Brands, if you're fighting against Hakrens, if you're fighting against Yolandas, Yolanda puts immunity, she puts attack, she puts shields up, Brand puts shields up at return, Hakren gives his max HP buff. There's so many buffs on the enemy defensive squads. This Ascension trait, as well as the speed up, is just extremely, extremely valuable overall. So do not doubt this trait. This is a massive, massive trait. It's going to be massive for PvP in general. The only unfortunate thing is I don't really see any PvE use for this. Um, I guess in some Void Tower scenarios, you don't really care about it in Queen, um, and there's not really other dungeons that put buffs on themselves, so kind of a PvP-focused character. The basic here is pretty simple, 100% damage, don't really care about that. 60% chance to apply Frozen, it's actually really, really solid. 60% uh, chance to stun or do any of those hard CCs on a basic is actually really good. It's pretty basic, though. Her second ability here is honestly probably her most mediocre skill. Removes all negative effects from a team member. A full cleanse is okay. Crit damage up and speed up is okay. The speed up's kind of be going to be superfluous, meaning it's just unnecessary because you're going to have so much speed up from the trait most likely. And the crit damage up isn't really a big bonus. Um, generally, you're going to want, you're going to prefer Yolanda's second skill. If this gave an instant turn or a bonus turn, I'd be much, much better and higher on this skill. But this seems kind of like a filler skill that's kind of just there. Um, maybe I'm doubting this and, and 
making it seem much worse than it is, but I just don't think that the skill is very good. It's kind of just there, uh, but really you care about her trait and her ultimate ability. Let's check out this ultimate ability real quick. First off, we apply shield and damage sharing. One of the first characters, I think the, the only character that applies damage sharing in the game, new buff uh, for three turns and removes a positive effect from all enemies if this character is damage sharing at the end of their turn. This is crazy. So we have damage sharing. If they don't remove that, she's going to be dispelling all positive effects or at least one positive effect from all the enemies at the end of each round, which is crazy, crazy good. Now, damage sharing and shield, we do not know how big these these buffs are is this shield scaling off of hp is this shield scaling off of defense is it scaling off just a flat number based on her level and her ability level don't really know is the damage sharing 50 percent like in raid like ally production is it 10 percent? is it 20 percent? is it based on something we don't know either if this is like ally protection from raid and if this shield is based off of hp or it's like a 30 percent at max hp shield this can be a massive massive skill it really all depends on how good shield and damage sharing is but generally damage sharing is one of the biggest and most dangerous uh buffs to fight against and to have it's really really good generally it's super super good and definitely definitely something to be looking out for because this could absolutely change uh some of the tankier comps can you imagine this on a team with like hacker and Mythasia, or even with something like Kane, who's also damage sharing. That was an idea that someone mentioned in the stream. Um, these these buffs can be very, very dangerous depending on how good they are and something to very, very much look out for in PvP. Again, I don't really see it being good for PvE. Um, you really don't want to replace any portions of your comps generally, but I will say that most of the times when new characters get released, the next rotation is going to include them in their Void Tower rotation. If you fight this character on a Void Tower rotation, it's going to be very, very scary because generally you're going to have buffs. Generally, you're going to be afraid of the extra speed because everyone's going to go first. And then they're going to be super hard to kill because of the damage sharing and shield. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're using brand comps. Um, this could be a very, very annoying character to go against in Void Tower hard and someone you might have to kind of play around. Uh, but other than that, I think she's just a pure PvP character, um, but very, very, very good at it, I think, especially for countering those Windstrexes and Brands and Hakrins uh, due to her trait. Now, if you don't have the Ascension, it doesn't really matter all that much unless you're running a lot of attack units. But if you're running Urzag, the Ascension trait could help quite a bit um, on offense, so keep that in mind as well. But those are my overall thoughts on Tashir. Uh, let me know in the comments down below whether or not you like the aesthetic, you like the character, um, and let me know what your overall thoughts on the updates are. I mean, obviously, this is just a kind of a uh, an admin update. You fixed a couple of bugs. Locking for the gear system is actually back now, which is really, really nice. I forgot to mention that. Um, but overall, it's just kind of like an update to stalls for kill versus environment. I kind of expect it as such. We got a new character. That's cool. Um, and let me know if you're going to be summoning in the comments down below. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.